My wife and I went to go see Handel's Messiah. We were sitting pretty close, and so we were watching the conductor do his thing. And it made me think about how an embodied reality was really needed in an orchestra because you have so many moving parts, there's so many quote unquote rules, and then everybody has their own miniature interpretation of like what is piano, what is forte, like how mm -hmm. long do you sustain this note? And it's almost as if all of that is first embodied into one person and then you watch him move and then live that out mm -hmm. so like your ideal is like in front of you and you basically imitate the conductor and so when he moves like this that's how hard you move the bow and then when he stops that's when you stop it's the imitation of that person that music happens when you were talking about the conductor i was thinking about how you know each one of these people like you said they have their own idea of how to play the song in their individuality but they're all participating in this one conductor's command of the music right and so you when he was talking about the imitation of Christ, he said that this is the, the problem for the Christian is that they don't just simply do only as Christ did. Like Christ was Christ and you can't mm -hmm. be Christ yeah. completely. Right. He said, if you take it to extreme, then that means that you would save the world or something. Yeah, you would yeah. save yourself. Right. Or like, literally no. die on a cross. Right. And yeah. he's like, he's like, that's not possible. So you have to figure out how do you in your individuality embody Christ? That's right. Uh, Edith Stein has, I hope I'm getting this right. She has this idea that each person is almost like their own species in a philosophical sense. She said that each human is uh, like a ray of light in a, in a rainbow or something mm -hmm, like that, okay. like has their own special set of humanity that they're sort of unrepeatable. So what do you do with that? Uh -huh. What do you do with your uniqueness? Like, so, well, it seems like you have to kind of bound it. You have to bind it to something. Yeah, right. Like this conductor, mm -hmm. you know, you have to bind yep. it to something yeah. like Christ. Yeah, because perfect imitation yes. of the conductor would make you a conductor. So, like, how does the trombone player embody the conductor? It's not by being a conductor. It's funny you mentioned the rainbow because in the rainbow, there's color frequencies. Mm -hmm. But in music, yes. there are sound frequencies. Right. And mm -hmm. so like every individual instrument player has their own frequency to occupy, whether you're creating harmonies or whatever. And so it's like, how do you live your frequency? Yeah. And it's in relationship to that conductor at the cadence, at the, right. the intensity. Right. That's a really good point because there are so many people that I've interacted with. They, they have a very specific idea of what living out Christianity looks like. And it's usually not in their particular lives. They think that like, well, taking up my cross is going to look like helping out at these various homeless shelters but like to your point that's your idea but boil it down even further get very personal right. with it what is the particular instance of your life where christ is actually calling you to grow closer to him and sometimes you know growing closer to christ is not going out of your home to feed the homeless but it's feeding your children that individuality of living the christian life mm -hmm. is sometimes much more closer to home than you think right. that's uh at the beginning of saint francis de sales introduction to the devout life oh, is yeah. you know you have to live your vocation or you have to live whatever God is calling you to. If you're a mother, you can't act like you're a Carthusian monk. Right, yeah. no, exactly. You know, and, yeah. and live in the middle of nowhere. It's yeah. like, oh, you have a family to take care of. That's yeah. where you're supposed to be. So how yeah. do you incarnate Christ in the home? You probably encountered this a little bit in seminary. It's tempting to find a favorite saint and be like, I'm going to be that saint. <laughs> yes. It's like, well... They were that same. Yeah. yeah. That's who they were. And yeah. you can't be them. Maybe there's things you admire about mm -hmm. them and things you want to take from them. Absolutely. But in the end, you should really have some sort of amalgamation of various saints and right. virtues yes, right. that you can find inspiration from, but you have to live in your own way. Right. Yeah.